Hey everybody, it's Mrs. C, and I am doing a screencast for you on uh, what a term, or I guess you'd say a concept, that we call transformations. Now, you've done transformations before in the lower grades. We're currently in the eighth grade, right? And um, they've pretty much been turns, flips, slides. Then we changed those to rotates. Uh, reflect and translate and now in comes a new term so let's see if we could read those directions down at the bottom see if you can see what they're going to ask us to do um, this may be what we're used to it may be a little something new so it says triangle a b c is shown below so we take a look at it you see a b and c connected together to make a triangle what kind of triangle that looks like uh Goodness, well, it could be a right triangle. Looks like uh, side AB might be the hypotenuse. I'm not sure. And it doesn't really matter because that's not what they're going to be asking me to do here. It says, what are the coordinates of the image of C after a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin? My gosh, that's a lot to digest in one shot. Well, let's let's start it out here. Image C. All right, so go to where you see a C. All right, there it is. So that's what I'm going to be thinking about. Image of C. Now, it's asking me what are the coordinates of the image of C after a rotation of 90 degrees. So you've got to think about what they're asking you to do. First of all, they're asking me to turn the triangle. I'm just going to draw the triangle over here. This is C right there. That's C. They're asking me to rotate it, turn it, or possibly turn it this way. So you can always rotate in two different directions. So the next step is to just try to understand which direction do they want me to turn. Do I turn to the left or do I turn to the right? So let's take a look, inspect it a little bit further, and we're going to see it tells us counterclockwise turn. Now, if you think of a clock, right, you, you have seen clocks with hands, right, I hope, like that. The clock naturally turns that way. Now, the clock doesn't turn, of course, I know, you caught me. The hands of the clock turn to the right. That is a normal clock mentality. Now, if you're to go counter to that, you're to go in the opposite direction. That's all counterclockwise means. So instead of turning to the right, we're actually turning to the left. So that's how I think of it. I always just picture a clock, old school clock in my head. Which way do the, which way do the hands normally turn? That is clockwise, the opposite direction, counter. So you see we are turning this figure in that direction. Okay, the next question then would have to be, how much do I turn it? Now, do I turn it a little bit? Do I turn it a lot of bit? Well, that's going to be told right there. My number's going to tell me how much I turn. Now, on a, a coordinate plane, we usually talk about degrees, at least at this level, in quarters. So what I mean by that is not 25. I mean a quarter of a circle because the entire coordinate plane. If I start here and I, sorry about that, if I start here and I go all the way around, what shape do you see that's green? That's right, it's a circle. So because the quadrants break this circle, called the unit circle, up into four pieces, because we have four quadrants, just a little shout out to our quadrants, one, two, three, and four, Roman numerals, and we go counter, right? Each quarter turn will break the circle up into how many degrees? Well, you do have to know that a circle has 360 degrees. I think you already know that. And if we're to break that up into quarters, we would be dividing by four. And if you divide it by four, you're going to have a little chunk that looks like that. Now, I know you recognize that is a 90 degree angle, and thusly, we have is thusly a word? I'm not sure. We have 90 degrees all around the circle. 
and look at that, 90, 90, 90, and 90 is 360. So a 90 degree turn would be how many quadrants would you go through to complete 90 degrees? You would only go through like that. You would have to turn whatever point is in whatever quadrant, it's going to go to the next quadrant. 90 degree turn. Now, I think that the explanation of that is a little bit more complicated than the actual doing of it, so let's just clear everything out. Let me put my picture back that I just erased by accident. There it is, the magic of technology. So, we go back to the question. It said, what are the coordinates of C? Here you are, C. After a rotation, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Turning that way, just one quadrant. Now here is the deal that makes it um, the last little piece that you have to think about. There's one little thing, there it is, about the origin. See, I can spin this figure any way I want. I can spin it around point A, point B, point C, or I could spin it around the origin which means I'm not turning the triangle to look like, pardon me for a minute as I draw this, they're not asking me to turn the triangle so that it would do something like that. That's spinning it around the point C, or I'm sorry, it's rotating it around the point C. They're asking me to rotate this figure around the origin, which is here. So this little guy is supposed to spin around that point. So this is what I ask myself. How far away is C from the origin right now? Well, if you look at it, it's, it's negative 3 this way and then up 1. So you know what I do in my head? I actually spin that little, looks kind of like a little backwards L or an L on its back. I actually spin that L. Watch this. In my head, I do a quarter turn this way, and I stop. What was it? Three. Like that. Do you see that? It's really simple if you think about it. Let's do a another quarter turn. I know they didn't ask us to, but had they asked me a 100, excuse me, 170, what am I thinking? 180 degree turn. 180 is 290s. So it's a half, halfway around the coordinate plane. So then my little point C would still be this little L, but it's going to keep spinning. And can you visualize where it would be? I want you to take a second to think. Where do you think I would put it? Are you good? You think you got it? I think you do. Like that. What if they said 270 degrees? So first we did the quarter. That put us here. Then we did 180. That put us here. They could have said 270. That would be, sorry, I'm having, <laughs> they could have said 270. That's 390s. And so where would it be in that case? I'll give you a second to look at it. I know you got this. You're so right. It would be there. All right. Now, what if they had said 3 160 degree turn counterclockwise about the origin where would we wind up right back where we started 360 degrees is a full turn if you think about yourself standing somewhere maybe you're maybe you're think about it's it's winter right now so let's think about staring out into the ocean and then do a 360 degree turn you're still staring at the ocean you just spun all the way around and came right back to where you started. So ordinarily, they don't ask us. I guess they could try to trick us with a 360, but that would be that deal. So let me see if I can erase this whole thing. I don't really want to clear my slide. That erases my picture. So let me just get all of this mumbo jumbo out of the way because we still have to know what we're supposed to say. What are the coordinates, right? We didn't actually answer the question yet. So let me just show you one more time. If you are three this way and up, a 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin would put your point 
there. Now you're not supposed to put these lines. I think that that would be a little bit confusing to somebody. So you just want to kind of do it in your head and then do your final answer right there. Now the final answer isn't the point. The final answer is actually the coordinates. So what are those coordinates? Well, remember x value first. The x value is a negative 1 and the y value is a negative 3. So your new coordinates after a 90 degree counterclockwise turn about the origin would be negative 1, negative 3. All right, I hope you have a little intuition on that. I'm moving you on to the next question. Read that question. I'm going to read it to you, but you, know, you could pause me if you like to read on your own. Uh, graph the image of the rectangle BCDE after a dilation. I'm going to underline that. Dilation with a scale factor of 4. I'm going to underline that. Centered at the origin. Okay, wow. Okay, let's break this down. Dilation means the shape is either going to get bigger or smaller. They call it an enlargement or a reduction, okay? Bigger being an enlargement. Oh boy, that would be a very bad sketch of an enlargement. And then smaller, really hard to put it in there, that would be a reduction, okay? It's really common sense if you think about it. Now, a scale factor of 4 will tell me whether it's going to be an enlargement or a reduction. This is so easy, you're not even going to believe it. A scale factor of 4, 4 being a whole number, means it's going to get bigger. I know that for sure. If it had said a scale factor of 1 fourth, now 1 fourth is smaller than a whole, and that means it's going to get smaller or it will be a reduction instead of an enlargement. Be careful. Somebody could, they'd be evil, but they could try to trick you. Sorry, that was supposed to be an erasing. They could try to trick you by giving you a fraction that's actually bigger than a whole. For example, I could say a scale factor of four thirds. Now, if you're not paying attention, all you see is a numerator and denominator. You think, oh, that's going to be a reduction, but whoa, whoa. Four and, and four-thirds is one and a third. That's bigger than a whole. That would be an enlargement. So be careful. Always look at what you're doing and use those beautiful brains of yours before you go and jump into an answer. They're not asking us to say whether it's an enlargement or a reduction. That would be easy. This is an enlargement. They want us to actually do it. So it tells us we're centered around the origin, which is simple. It means we don't have to rotate or move this thing or spin it or do anything crazy, which I love because it's so much easier. And then I want you to see how, how straightforward doing this actually is. If we are enlarging by a scale factor um, of 4, it means, or excuse me, we're dilating by a scale factor of 4. That means we're making it bigger. We're doing an enlargement four times as big, or basically go to your point and quadruple everything. It, it makes complete sense, but let me show you anyway. It gave us rectangle B, C, D, E. So I like to start with whatever letter they gave me. So I'm going to go with B. Now, B is at a negative 1, negative 2. Do you see that? Negative 1, negative 2. That's my original B. Now, a B that has been changed, we write B prime, which is just a little indication of I've done something to this. Pretty straightforward, right? I think. It's just a little mark to show this has been changed. So now, if I'm doing a scale factor of 4, I'm going to multiply, pardon me using an X, I don't usually do that, but I'm going to for this sake. I'm going to multiply each coordinate by 4. So that's going to give me my new image of negative 1 times 4 is negative 4, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. My new transformed B is now negative 4, negative 8. Where's negative 4, negative 8? It's there. Is that not like the easiest thing you've ever done? I think it is. Now can you see that you really don't need to do the math to each um, coordinate in order to get the answer. I hope you do see that. Because they gave it to you on graph paper, you could just do that little L thing that I did before. You could ask yourself, 
you know, how far down, how far over, and then and do that. So, for example, when I was at B, I went down, let's see, one, two. My pen does not like me to go slow, so I'm just going to do that. I went down one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, two, three. So in this case, I'm going to do that to every single one. But watch out, I'm not always going to go down and to the left. I've got to make this look like a rectangle around the original one. So from E, I'm going to do E, I'm going to go up six and over three. See, one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then over from here, one, two, three. So over one, two, three. It makes sense. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of doing it. And don't mind my, my poor uh, drawing skills. You do want to be a vertical line. Remember, it's a rectangle. So it's got to abide by all the rectangle rules. And please don't do all those little loop-de-doops because that's just confusing. Nice. Okay. So now let's figure out where this other one be. It would be up and then over again, right? So it would be up six and over one, two, three. So then that's going to be there. That's going to be there. And then I would go straight down. And I just use the lines that are already there to guide me. Because I know my rectangle's got to look like that. And that's it. Okay, well. So it didn't ask me to record any uh, data. It didn't ask me. Sometimes it'll say, what's the coordinate of the, you know, uh, one of the letters that have been already transformed. But it didn't. If it had, it would probably do something like this. It might say, give me the coordinates of this D prime. And then leave a blank and a blank. And that's when you'll see that little number. Now that number will change with every transformation we do to it. So if I asked you to dilate it by a scale factor of 4 and then rotate it as you dilate it, it would be D prime. And then the next transformation would be D, what do you think that's called? If D1 is D prime, this is D, that's, you are so smart, double prime. You're right. Okay. You're thinking, the heck, double prime. All right. Write the coordinates of the vertices after a dilation with a scale factor of 3 centered at the origin. So this is exactly what we did before. And honestly, guys, I'm not even looking at the graph because I'm just looking at the words. Scale factor of 3 means it's going to get bigger. I want you to think, is it an enlargement or a reduction? You're right. It's an enlargement because it's a whole number greater than 1. Um, vertices are referring to the, the letters, the points of my, what shape is that? It's a trapezoid, good. So, uh, they, and they're giving me the coordinates. You see this down here? They're giving me the coordinates. Honestly, I'm just going to use my brain here and triple every number that's there. That's going to be a really easy way to get through it. So I want you to go ahead and pause me. And then when you come back, I'm going to have the data for you. Okay, voila, I'm back. And I hope you don't mind. I, I couldn't quite fit the numbers into those little boxes they gave us. But let's see if you have the same answers. They didn't ask us to graph it, but I always graph it because I want to make sure that my numbers, when I graph them, I didn't make a silly mistake. And it should make sense when you get that picture. So we have B going to B prime, negative 6, negative 6. I've graphed it. C to C prime, 9, negative 6. D prime is 9, 0. And E prime is negative 9, 0. If you connect those points with a line, I'm using a really big marker to make it easier for me to draw this. Uh, it makes sense. I mean, it makes sense to me. So um, it doesn't really look... Oh, Sorry, it's, I see, I was I always use my brain when I'm doing this. Not always at the same time, but you can see I didn't connect those properly and it looked a little confusing because it didn't look like the original shape. You do have to, don't want to start with a trapezoid and end with a, a circle or a triangle. Something went wrong. All right, let's keep on, let's keep on rocking. 
I'm doing awesome. Now, it's going to get easier. It's going to go downhill from here. The orange shape is a dilation of the black shape. What is the scale factor of the dilation? So the orange shape is, is a dilation. It's either an enlargement or a reduction of the black shape. So, well, what do you think? Is it an enlargement or a reduction? Yes, it's an enlargement, which means our scale factor is going to be a whole number. The question is, how much bigger? What did we times these um, coordinates by to get to the new point? So I like to always just take a look at it. Just let's look here. Let me go back to that big point. This one to this one. It just makes sense. Those are corresponding vertices. The first one is at negative 3. Just, just look at the x alone. All of the coordinate parts, the x and the y value, are going to be multiplied by the same scale factor. So I don't have to look at anything but just one of them because it's going to be consistent through the entire dilation. So what's the x value of this little guy? It's a negative 3. Now what is it, <clears throat> pardon me, in the orange? The x value is at negative 9. So if I go from a negative 3 to a negative 9, I dilate it by what scale factor? To go from 3 to 9, yeah, it's 3. It's a scale factor of 3. And that's, that's all they're asking. Simplify your answer and write it as a fraction or a whole number. What is the scale factor of the dilation? The scale factor, if this was a computer-generated uh, problem, so you would have typed in the answer 3. I mean, easy breezy. It would be the same for any of the vertices that you picked the value. If we had done the y value instead of the x, it would have been the same thing. You test it out and tell me that I'm not right. Of course I am. Okay, another one. The blue shape is a dilation of the black. What is the scale factor of the dilation? Take a second, do it yourself, and then come back. All right, so did we get bigger or smaller? When we went from the black to the blue, we got smaller. Scale factor is going to have to be a fraction with a numerator smaller than the denominator. So if I go, again, I'm just going to pick this one. Oh, I lost my marker. Hang on. If I go from this one to, say, that one, go with the original and find out what you went. So we start at the original. That x value looks to be at negative 8. All right. And then the new little one looks to be at negative 2. So if you have a negative 8, let me just go to a pen. If you, say, had an ordered pair where one of them was, let me put the smaller one first, I think it'll be easier to see, a negative 2, and then you went to a new one, and that was at negative 8, what did you multiply the little one to to go to the bigger one? When you went from a 2 to a 4, 2 to an 8, I gave it away, you multiplied by 4, right? Okay, but I said you have to keep in mind that the scale factor of a dilation where you have a reduction is going to be in a fraction form because we didn't go from a 2 to an 8. We went from an, a negative 8 to a 2, a negative 2. So you have to multiply in order to go from a bigger number to a smaller number. You have to multiply by a fraction, which we already knew that the scale factor had to be a fraction. So instead of it being 4, which would make no sense if you stop and think, it has to be the reciprocal of that, one-fourth. If you think of it that way, I think it's just a lot easier for you. If you look at the shape and you know it's been reducted, been reducted, been reducted, been reduced, then you know that your answer is going to be whatever that scale factor was, but it's got to be a reciprocal of that because it's got to be a fraction. Okay. Transformations, dilations. Hope you have a little more clarity or a little bit more intuition on transformations. If you want more practice on these, I found all these problems on IXL Math. So I think it's IXL.com, I believe, or just Google IXL Math, and it will come up to you whatever grade you're in. Currently, guys, just as a reminder, you're in eighth. <laughs> Not for much longer, but right now. You're still in 8th grade. You can go on their little problem generator, pick the specific skill that you want to practice, and it'll just give you a whole bunch of practice like these problems. It's a great place to go to just make sure you know what you're doing and test out your skills. 
All right, you go do that. I got to get ready for school. So I will see you. What is it? On the flip side.